Welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel for the final installment of uh, a trip that I had to Aduro Clean uh, Technologies, both the laboratory, uh, and this is the content you've all been waiting for to actually put your eyes on the reactor as I did, the R2 reactor. It's going to be awesome to see uh, this thing actually put to the rigor of customer engagements. It's uh, going to be awesome to monitor the progress and 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 really see this story uh, continue to evolve. Um, it was a really wonderful firsthand experience for me, and to convey that and pay that forward uh, with the big thanks of Anil Javoir, uh, the chief scientist with Aduro Clean Technologies, and the entire Aduro team. I, I tell you what, it wouldn't have happened without them, and, and it makes me uh, extremely excited to be able to, to pay forward this firsthand uh, account of my site visit, and hopefully we were able to capture um, not only the equipment, uh, the the firsthand uh, on uh, boots on the ground perspective uh, on what Aduro is working on currently, uh, what they've got planned in the short term, and what we can kind of expect here as as the coming um, the coming catalyst really start to unfold for Aduro. Uh, Aduro is really right there at the top of the discussion uh, with uh, combating the plastic problem uh, across the globe. Um, there are uh, multi-level initiatives going on right now, uh, both with incentives, uh, mandates, uh, as well as some uh, putting this uh, topic of plastic pollution in the limelight and looking to tackle this problem twofold, both from an education perspective, um, as I think the general populace is somewhat naive on this. Uh, as well as putting some of the responsibility on our plastic producers, as they are well aware, uh, which is going to uh, put companies like Aduro and a few others um, really in the in the limelight and and allow these companies and their technology to be brought to bear uh, as they look to scale up to commercial. Um, as we kick off this interview, we're going to conclude in the laboratory as Anil talks a little bit about the team, the safety culture with uh, Aduro Clean Technologies, some of the investments in training and safety uh, initiatives uh, with their team. Uh, so let's just right, uh, jump right into it. And at the end of the video, we're going to jump over to uh, the R2 and the tutorial of the uh, reactor that uh, we want to see that tutorial on. So um, let's jump in and see what Aduro uh, Clean Technologies and the Chief Scientist Anil Javar have to say about the safety culture and the training that's gone into the Aduro team. So Aduro uh, operates uh, with the safety as the top priority and it's invest a lot of money on it, uh, building its team and, and the improvement of the team members. Like we recently spent, uh, trained all our employees on uh, switch lock uh, components, like we got them switch lock training so that they can understand the pressure, uh, temperature relationship for the tubes, fittings they are using. Uh, we also uh, got them trained on safety uh, and uh, CPR first aid. So Aduro does a lot of investment on uh, updating the team members. We also support uh, if they need to take any professional courses or education, we do. So Aduro, like what we are looking is not cutting corners, right? Like we are looking really uh, on investing on the people because Aduro is nothing without the people, right? Like we need our team. And right now we what we got is a really passionate and dedicated team. Uh, so they are... Uh, passionate and dedicated towards the company and we provide them all the support we can uh, by providing whatever they need, education, uh, updating uh, uh, their skills. And as I worked through uh, this uh, final stage of the interview here, Anil really wanted to talk about uh, the investments in the team and what some of those investments looked like um, through the training, training initiatives and, and really the give back and understanding um, the the team uh, concept uh, at Aduro, he really wanted to emphasize that it was a fun place to work. Um, and that was conveyed also by Anil's uh, colleague uh, as well, who, who joined us during the interview. Uh, and it was very, very apparent uh, top down that uh, there was not a separation between management and 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 the laboratory and and the goings on uh, in in the uh, in the in the study and down in Texas and the initiatives that are happening abroad and with Western U University. It struck me as being a collaborative effort on this project, which probably speaks to why they've been able to accelerate their um, their efforts. 
so quickly thus far? Yeah, so we actually, like at Aduro, really invest on our team members, right? Like we, we see that if they have better skills and we upgrade them, uh, it's, it's in the best interest of the company. And as, as uh, Nidhav said, like uh, safety is a top priority uh, at Aduro. What we say is like, if you can't do a thing safely, don't do it. Like we are not going to do it. So what we are doing in terms of safety is like, we do have safety policies, which we are working and developing in collaboration with industry experts and what, he, what have been followed in the petroleum industry. Apart from that, what we are doing is we are not just going for minimum requirements kind of thing, like uh, we may or other things. We are trying to put more effort and getting the teams uh, trained on different safety aspects, like by providing them understanding with uh, uh, like uh, safety experts, uh, providing them training on first aid CPR, learning about safety and other aspects of the career as well. And I asked an interesting question to shift gears a little bit. I, I think sometimes, and I've listened to most of the Q&A um, that have been posed, especially to Ofer Vikas uh, and to Mena Bashev, the, uh, and and a lot of it has to do with, with angst um, amongst investors, uh, interested parties in Aduro. And Aduro always comes over the top and kind of says, look, we we want to see this thing get to market uh, just as soon as possible, but we will not rush the process. And I wanted Anil's insights on this. Um, I asked him, you know, I, I said, does Aduro feel rushed to the process? And I wanted to get his perspective as well. I think we can all agree that, you know, global tensions are tight. Um, financial markets are, are volatile. Um, the financial uh, institutions uh, have been volatile as of late. And I wanted to get his pulse on whether or not they feel at all that they need to rush this technology to market. And I think you'll be interested to hear what Anil has to say on that particular comment. I would say Aduro is not rushed to develop the technology. I would say rather than process, I would say it's a journey. So what we are working on is like try to identify all the potential problems we could like in terms of handling material, what are the pre and post treatment steps required. So we are working uh, diligently to make all that steps understand uh, uh, what we need for them, how to address that in our reactor system. So basically we are taking and developing the technology at our own pace. We are not rushed by the market or the pressure of the uh, people, I would say. Uh, and what we are doing here is looking carefully each and every step. And we are taking what we call is the limited baby steps to scale the technology right from uh, laboratory to a continuous scale to actually de de demonstration and uh, commercial scale. And in terms of uh, supply chain, like yes, we do get affected by some of the supply chains because our continuous re reactor system, which was supposed to be up and running like uh, quite a uh, while ago, we, we got delayed because uh, it took like really long time to get each and every step uh, stuff. Like even the equipments, like whatever we got promised from the companies to get the equipment date, we, we never got at that date, right? It got pushed claiming supply chain issues and all those things. And the most interesting question that I was able to pose as we closed down the uh, laboratory uh, portion of the Aduro Clean Technology site visit was I asked him, and this was a personal question of mine, and I asked it on behalf of all of the would-be followers of the Aduro story. I asked him, I said, please, if you could just imagine where you see Aduro in five to 10 years, um, where where it would be that he would expect to see the company uh, into the future? What place would they uh, hold in this uh, uh, bringing this technology to bear? You know, what position would they would they hold? Where um, where does he see Aduro as far as in the industry? Would they you know would they be an industry leader? Um, would the technology be deployed? Would they be at mass scale? That type of thing. So take a listen carefully. On, a, on what Anil said when I posed the question, where do you see Aduro in five to 10 years from now? So in, in terms of 10 years, I would say I, I could see Aduro as a leading technology provider in one of the plastic recycling space. And also it could uh, foray in uh, what we call is, as I told you, Aduro is a platform technology. So we do have technology for heavy oil upgrading and renewable fuels. So, so I, I see like Aduro foraying in all these areas and, and becoming a leading, uh, leading technology provider. 
and addressing the problem what we are facing with especially plastic. So we switched over to the to the laboratory, excuse me, to the site where the R2 was constructed. Um, there is a little bit of background noise, so I do apologize. This was, you know, me filming this and asking the questions at the same time. So um, I, I, I want to thank Anil because um, under the conditions, it was pretty, pretty amazing for him to run through this tutorial for your viewing pleasure. Um, it was amazing to hear what he had to say. You're going to want to listen to this, watch it a couple of times, because the responses that I got uh, with regard to uh, the kickoff question and having him walk through the capabilities of the R2, I think you'll find will prove extremely valuable in understanding a lot more holistically the Aduro Clean Technology story as it pertains to the R2 in its final stages and bringing the R2 to the customer engagement uh, piece to this evolution as the story unfolds. Yeah, so the system is uh, currently successfully installed our test facility. Uh, what we have done is it's uh, mechanically and electrically complete. Uh, we already got a TSSA registration for the system for uh, mechanical integrity. Right now what we are doing is final troubleshooting of all the electrical components so that uh, we can uh, get what we call as uh, electrical safety approvals. Uh, we are just troubleshooting and making sure like every component which is installed is working properly. Uh, all the heat trays are working as intended and checking controls. Uh, all the safety system so that we can have when the unit is operational it's safe to operate and operate as designed. What we have in this system is uh, there are uh, two feed tanks. One is uh, uh, for introducing water and other our chemicals. Uh, they are pumped uh, through a same pump uh, which is a high pressure pump. It uh, feeds the reactor system and here what we have is a an extruder. We are using an, this extruder as a pump to push uh, our plastic into the reactor system. We can load the material uh, through this uh, uh, auger into that hopper and basically they are melt fed into the reactor using this uh, extruder as a pump. So we push the polyethylene or polypropylene or any other plastics material into the reactor. We co-mix it uh, with uh, uh, our water and other uh, feed chemicals and basically in the reactor system they are mixed. Uh, we have uh, mixing, we can control the mixing, we can control temperature and pressure inside the reactor. They are heated to a desired conditions and we adjust the flow rate to maintain what we call is a space time. And once we, uh, a desired reaction is processed, we get the product flowing from the bottom. We control the pressure using this back pressure regulator so we can set the pressure whatever is desired for the process. And once the temperature and pressure is reached and we, we get the conversion, the product flows through this back pressure regulator into twin uh, condensing system uh, where we are able to collect different fractions of the product, uh, water, everything. And the non-condensables leaves from the top of the reactor system. We, we measure the flow rates of that and, and we what we do is we exhaust the non-condensable gases outside. So this is a very modular and flexible unit uh, what we have designed. Uh, so this unit is designed to operate at relatively low flow rate as, as low as uh, 200 uh, uh, grams per hour to 5 kilograms per hour. It can operate under those conditions. We can also change uh, what we call is the ratios of the amount of material we are feeding in, water and other chemicals. Uh, we can control the temperatures like we can change temperatures all the way from like 100 degrees Celsius to 500 degrees Celsius. We can maintain the pressures all the way from like ambient to 4000 PSI. And what we have done is we made this system so flexible like if you need to change any components we can do it because we are what we are using is like a switch lock type of connections uh, which is compression connections so we can just mod modularly remove and update the systems as needed. That's correct. It's, it's not just converting them right like because most of the people can convert or most companies can convert anything into some product but really the trick is converting them into an usable product like what what's the value we are creating out of it right it's not just creating a mixed bag of stuff but creating a product which is highly usable uh, usable i quite simply had to double down and ask anil if what we were looking at here with the r2 was done uh, and he assured that at the time of filming this video it's taken me a couple of weeks actually to draw off the renderings from the site visit 
Um, but uh, they were awaiting electrical certification. And my understanding is that that has been completed. Uh, and we are just uh, awaiting the relocation to actually get it to its um, its uh, um, its final location where the R2 will be put uh, into the rigor uh, of showcasing the hydrochemolytic technology uh, to would-be customers and to showcase the technology firsthand for those uh, would-be customers through their customer engagement program. Yeah, so what you see here, it's a complete uh, unit. So we already received what we call is uh, mechanical certifications. Uh, all the electrical components and control systems are in place. Uh, what we are doing is we are just doing a final checks of like all electrical components working or not working. And basically, uh, so that we have a complete safe system to operate. And what we are waiting on is like just receiving uh, electrical safety certification, which we expect to happen very soon. As I was looking at the unit, I, I was interested in some of the safety protocols, um, some of the hazardous operations, if any, that had been uh, taken into consideration in building the R2. And this is what Anil offered in response to that question. And, and, and while we are doing uh, the safety installation and checking all this, we also got our uh, getting our operational team ready. So we have all the uh, SOPs, uh, standard operating procedures ready. We have uh, trained the team on how to operate the system, how to troubleshoot it. We also got them uh, trained in safety, uh, all, all other things so that we have the team ready as when we have the unit ready to go. Yeah, I would say like given the scale of uh, this reactor, uh, we did not need it to do HAZOP, but uh, we went ahead and invested in doing in HAZOP so that we can kind of simulate and assess the scenarios, uh, what could possibly go wrong and how to address it. And, and even on the unit, we had added multiple layers of safety. So for example, in this reactor system, uh, what we have is we, all, we have a, a rupture disk, which will blow up if the pressure goes uh, beyond the set limit. But not only that, we also have a safety relief valve. We also have an automated pressure control. Like basically we have a pressure sensor monitoring the pressure of the reactor and you can set a safety limit. And if it hits that pressure point, it's, it's going to shut down the power to the system. So what we have done is just not focusing on minimum safety, but we, we did like a layers of safety so that we can make sure like our team and the unit and the environment is safe. So as I was looking at the unit, I, I had a couple of questions. And the, the simple question was, how has R2 performed um, since it's been built and, and staring down its final certification? And have there been any problems with the unit? And uh, here's what Anil had to say about that. Uh, I would say not so much because we we really thought about designing this system, right? So we we kind of before even we started designing, we envisioned like what could go wrong, what are the possibilities, how to have the system modify. So for example, we designed systems such that like if you were to take the product from the bottom of the reactor, we can do it. We can also take like a vapor phase product or we can take like a, a liquid product by using a jib tube. So we, we thought about all those things well in advance and we have incorporated that in our design. And for the second to last question, this was one that I was the most interested in. Um, I asked him, can the learnings from R2 be used in the scale up? Okay. Obviously, we're looking on the horizon for the potential to upscale this technology to take it to um, a, a, a commercial or pre-commercial state where we can see larger batches uh, actually operate. And in my mind, I thought, okay, we're just going to have R3 as a, a big brother to R2. And it's interesting what Anil offers here with regard to the overbuilding um, and, and the really thoughtful process and, and dollars that were integrated in the R2, idea being there that they would overbuild R2 to understand the parameters of the chemistry and then building R3 would actually in some capacities be scaled back or tailored in the capacity that they need within the ranges that they're looking to work. So the learnings that were actually garnered from R2 actually allowed them some cost cutting uh, some cost saving initiatives when they do end up going to mass scale because they don't have to build it as robust as they did the R2. They can take those learnings and they can integrate those in the scaled up versions where some of that overbuilt 
uh, uh, learnings that they got from R2 will be actually unnecessary for R3. So I'll let you take a listen to what Anil said on this in one of the most fascinating portions of my site visit uh, to Aduro Clean Technologies. So I would I would say that uh, whatever the learnings we are doing here, they, they can definitely be used for a larger system. But I would not build a larger system to be as flexible as this one, right? Like we will narrow down the process conditions. We will bracket that so that we don't invest so much capital building a system which we are not going to use all the capabilities of right so really this is our uh, playing test equipment i would say so we incorporated all the possible flexibility uh, and gave us all the latitude so that we can test all different parameters and we are going to narrow down as we learn from this we will collect this data which will be used for designing of our next scale of uh, Reactor. And I think the, the final uh, question that I asked is how will R2 be utilized? I think we all understand that it's going to be used for customer engagements, but what what that looks like is yet to be seen. Okay. Um, Adura will release those um, those uh, news releases as appropriate. I will share those as they come across to my desk. But I would ask the investing community to be patient with this. Um, Aduro has the goods. Um, their chemistry works, um, and it was uh, doubled down on and solidified for me. Uh, I hope that you were able to glean uh, what I was able to take away from my site visit here. But let, let's let Anil uh, talk about where R2 will be utilized here when the unit is actually uh, put in front of the customers uh, and the uh, technology is... Um, is able to be showcased in the presence of would-be customers. So, so way we designed all these reactors, they are on the skid so that we can move them as is without having to disassemble. Uh, basically, they could be put on a flatbed truck and move to different facility. So, our new facility uh, of Aduro in London, Ontario, should be ready uh, pretty soon. But we didn't want to wait till then so that we have these units and team. Uh, at least understand how to operate this unit so that we can make any necessary arrangement at the new facility and incorporate any additional things required. And on behalf of the Independent Investor Channel, I'd like to thank the Aduro Clean Technologies team, the CEO, Mr. Ofer Vikas, uh, as well as the chief scientist, Mr. Anil Jawar, who welcomed the Independent Investor team up there for the site visit. Um, couldn't have been any better than that. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, appreciated this three video chronicle. If you missed the first two, uh, I will link those in the description below for you. So you can go back and catch the entire site visit uh, in its entirety. If you're interested in the Aduro Clean Technology story, um, leave your comments at the bottom, ask questions if you're interested in this initiative. Uh, for all of you guys out there, I would ask you to subscribe to the channel. We will continue to cover this story. We will continue to cover the news releases as they are made available and come across to my desk. I will pay those forward to you. Um, they are tackling one of the major pain points in the world right now. Uh, and companies understand that they have to get on board uh, with seeking out new solutions, new technologies that of which Aduro brings to bear. And it's going to be wonderful to see over the coming months and coming years, uh, Aduro carve out their place in addressing the plastic problem uh, with their hydrochemolytic uh, technology uh, as showcased in this video. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Hit the like button and the notification bell on this series. If you like more content like this, let us know. We appreciated bringing it to you. And as always, good luck in your investment future.